BioBalance HealthCast, episode 238, Blood Type, Good Health, and Longer Life. BioBalance HealthCast features conversations about positive aging. Your hosts are Dr. Kathy Maupin, Medical Director of BioBalance Health and a leading expert in treating symptoms of aging, and Brett Newcomb, a licensed professional counselor. Do you know what your blood type is? I don't know what mine is, but I'm going to find out because I've been reading this book. It's called Live Right for Your Type by Dr. Peter J. Dadamo. And Dr. Dadamo makes the case that your blood type contains within it markers that doctors, scientists, whomever can look at and make predictive values about how you would manage stress what kinds of mental illnesses you might be susceptible to, what kinds of diet concerns you might be having in your lifetime, uh, what modifications or adaptations might be helpful for you in managing your emotional issues, your diet issues, your life issues. So he builds on this and in his book he connects uh, with previous research that's been done on personality types like Myers-Briggs uh, or the, the Jungian archetypes uh, from from the 1800s. It, it's an interesting thing and an arguable uh, perspective. It's, it's a premise that he postulates and he quotes his research and his anecdotal uh, not specifically scientific uh, research, but contains a lot of scientific data. And Dr. Mopp and I have been discussing this book because we've been reading it and we find it fascinating. It comes down to the whole nature versus nurture argument of being born with certain potentialities and then which of those get triggered or developed by you in your family, in your culture, in your tribe. Uh, and what can you learn about that that would be helpful, if anything? And being the scientist, I, my belief is that, and I, I have to back this up. I read Eat Right for Your Type. Which is his two, earlier book. His first book yeah. in 2000. Okay. And I've been watching people right. and their blood types. On the basis of that. Uh, and figuring out dietary plans for them on, on this basis for... 15 years. Uh -huh. And so, so I have some experience with kind of watching how this plays out. If I can find out a blood type of a patient, most so women know their blood type it as a scientist and a physician, right? And yeah. as a GYN and OB, I always had somebody's blood type in front of me. Women right. always have their blood type done when they're pregnant. So, okay. so if they've ever been pregnant, I've got a blood type in front of me while I'm talking to somebody and kind of in my mind going, Dr. D'Amato, did I say Dadamo. that wrong? D'Amato is right. I mean, this this person has these personality types and does great with this food, but not with this food. And you know, and I've been kind of in my mind having these categories. And there's four categories: type A, type B, type O, and type AB. Okay. So those are, those are the general blood types. Well, let me read from page twenty yes. of his book mm -hmm. <laughs> what he calls putting it together, mm -hmm. because he's trying to find a place to stand to to postulate this argument that we're having. Mm -hmm. And we'll be talking about blood types uh, on the basis of this over several podcasts. Uh, Dr. Dadamo says, let's begin with the assumption that every characteristic has a basis in our genetic memory. Anthropological studies have proven irrefutably that certain archetypal personality and behavior traits throughout our evolutionary history are directly linked to our survival. Proponents of sociobiology, a theory first advanced by E. O. Wilson at Harvard University, believe that the way that we behave can be explained by examining our evolutionary patterns. Aggression, attraction, and cooperation behaviors all promote a continuation of the species. However, as we know, these behaviors are not automatic. They have been refined over time by shifting environments and cultural influences. Thus, nature versus nurture. Nurture, and so, and when I hear that, uh -huh. I think about the anthropologic information that mm -hmm. they've gone back, and they've. We can now do genetic studies on dead people on, uh -huh. on bones and a snip on snip of hair, uh, piece yes, of bone, right? Yeah. And so we can go back and find out what their genetics were, what their blood types were, and the original blood type. So you can original. trace the migration of blood types right. through the centuries. Right. And now, I mean, I don't know if you, you've you done this, but I've gone to uh, familytree.com and done my genetics and watched where my mother's family came from. You know, we all start in Africa. And then there's a migration toward Europe and to Russia and, and watch. And I can go back with my genetics and find out where they both, what, what 
pool of genetics they came from. So if you think of it this way, if O is the primary blood type of all humans to begin with, and then as we migrated and we dealt with our environment, some of us with certain, with if this is so significant, if it marks all of these significant characteristics, then some people with these blood types, not because of their blood types, but because of what it signifies in terms of our personality, our dietary needs, we, some of us lived better if we were an A. So all the people that went to Europe and became farmers did better with a farmer-like food, food groups and didn't necessarily need as much of the meet the hunters mm -hmm. that's O. the hunters and gatherers that's what o blood types do best with then the a's did best with grain and vegetables and fruit and things that you grow mm -hmm. chickens and things you have on the farm that was the a blood type and then the o's didn't do so well may not have survived that so they dropped off and we got a primary a blood type in europe and then as people started migrating toward asia they went through russia the blood type that survived the best there was B. So people who were Bs then started migrating. Strictly focusing on the diet component. The diet component, this. and as we know now, and I will discuss in a sec in a minute, that the, the that blood type signifies and is on the same exact locus, the same exact place as personality, what we need for food, what we need for stress reduction, what we need. I mean, there's so many things on this one locus on one chromosome. And it's, I mean, it's on the long arm of the ninth chromosome at the 38th, at the 38th um, band. So we can find it and it's on there with all this other information. And all of this determines basically how we survive our environment. So yeah, as, it's not an absolute predictor. No, it's, it's not. A, it's it's a, just... It's, Our it delivers a set of possibilities right. depending on then the circumstances of your life, the food that's available, mm -hmm. the stress levels of your family, tribe, or group, uh, the way that you are trained or taught to cope with different things. Like you may be born, you may be born with the best set of genetic markers to be the greatest swords person that ever lived. But if you don't live in a culture that needs or values sword play, I think you're an you'll, O. You'll never develop that. You're starting to play with, you know, with. Is that what O's do? Yeah, yeah. So you know, I think I'm an A. The hunter, the hunters, the hunters that are vying because for power. Because I was smiling power. earlier when you were talking about. Like, <laughs> I went on on genealogy. Dot com thing and tracked my ancestors back. You know your ancestry. You know within two or three generations exactly where everybody came from. My family is part of the melting pot mutt group uh, of, of crossbreeders for generations. <laughs> we don't know enough to know where we came from. Yeah, I have two. I have two genetic and pools, but you, you can have, tell yeah. that by genes. You can go back and you can have them evaluate your genetic profile and it will tell you where everybody came from seriously and the whole the whole yeah. set of mutts and yeah they'll give you the percentages of how much gene so we carry our ancestors with us sure that's Absolutely. that's how this is described so we carry the genetic material from way far back but the last blood type is more asian and it's the most highly um, changed or mutated or highly um I, it's the smallest blood type, but it's finely honed by all of these environmental changes. So AB is the smallest blood type, the m less least frequent blood type, but ABs are the last to appear as we go through this change. Now there's ABs, As, Bs, and Os everywhere, but that's the last one to to actually. But but one be of the changed. things we need to remember is that all of this data in the aggregate is statistical and we talk about statistical significance statistics are never individually predicted no. mm -mm. Uh, I ha it goes to the nature versus nur nurture mm -hmm. argument for me I have an adopted child I don't know what my blood type is I don't know what his blood type mm -hmm. is but I can tell you that his personality traits and characteristics his mannerisms his verbiage his word choice his sense of humor mm -hmm. is so like mine that it's phenomenal it's eerie and it's not genetically driven. No. But what I have to realize is if, if we step back and we're not looking at individually him and individually me, we're part of a cluster pool of genes in this greater society so that statistically the data would indicate that we would be similar. 
just because we come from the same pool, we're just individual and units. And you don't know. And we if, don't know. You don't. You haven't compared his genetics to yours. There may be some connection. Well, back that's there. what I'm arguing. There probably is. There, it may larger, not just be. But most nurture. Of the, it may be nature too. This is absolutely. You know, but how most we of the prepare for these pool, is our. No. Most of the target pool in my Arguments. geographical area is going to be similar. Because Possible. the people over centuries that have settled here and lived within this culture, which steers us in certain directions. Mm -hmm. Like this culture does not reinforce a high level of aggression. We're, we're moderated not to be so overtly aggressive, but to contain it and control it, release it in certain ways. You know, it's it's better to be on a high school football team and knock somebody out than to just walk up on the street and knock somebody well, out. Well, that's true. I mean, all of what we have genetically is then modified by our experience the and by that we wear, the and by our there. environment and yes. certain i mean if you're more aggressive overtly more aggressive yes. you're in this society you're less likely to survive right you pull a gun on somebody you're less likely to live absolutely so, it doesn't reinforce for that right it doesn't reinforce for that and that's exactly what i was talking about about blood types actually being changing as people migrated to different environments right so if if we went through now what you and i went through yesterday mm -hmm. was looking at so i'm going to read okay what this physician and researcher has found out about different blood types so okay. personality traits and myers-briggs Mm -hmm. traits or uh, types seem to follow the lines in his research of blood types okay so we talked about traits like extrovert introvert ambivert and pervert <laughs> only for you <laughs> <laughs> so type o are, are generally not always mm -hmm. extroverted strong leaders confident practical strategic patient and logical now those those personality types also went along with how do you survive a very difficult environment to survive a difficult environment way back when caveman days you had to have all those things or you didn't survive it mm -hmm. right so so as we've gone to cushier environments or different environments we need different traits so then type a is the european and european blood type and st louis all those people from germany and england and ireland showed up here because it looks a lot like germany england and ireland here except for the fog and so we have a we have a higher uh, blood type a positive blood type than normally across the country so our mo most common blood type is a positive so a a blood type is more introverted intense inventive demanding perfectionistic sensitive cooperative and creative mm -hmm. now i'm married to one of them okay okay so that's pretty much true except he's really kind of introverted extroverted i mean he's really not an introverted guy but, but there are he has within all that list. that's I mean, right to be sensitive and demanding at the same yeah, time that's not really requires some balancing yes it does yeah. and usually and, and it's part of what you have to learn through nurture how do you balance that to manipulate your environment and get reinforced or your parents have to learn how to nurture you exactly. so that you don't express a social behavior mm -hmm. so then we go to bees which is what i am independent free thinking resilient or i wouldn't have gotten through med school creative original subjective and inveterate organizer which explains all my lists everywhere so um and that to and me is pretty your true closet and organize yeah. your systems yeah and, yeah, yeah. And I, that's true because if i'm not organized then i get distracted but she, well, she told me one time when she gets really, really stressed out, she goes home and reorganizes all of her closets. I just clean them out, throw up, pitch things, of line them up. Things <laughs> is a useful skill that makes you feel better and it That's reduces right. your stress. That's right. And it's about stress reduction because stress mm -hmm. will kill you. That's true. And we all and and all all and according to this physician, all blood types have a the best way of mm -hmm. managing stress, which has to do with how we break down cortisol, mm -hmm. how we break down adrenaline. So so there is a physiologic basis to all of this. And that's this. where it all gets fascinating. Because right. Because there are physiological components. Your body, I, I would argue that your body can't tell the difference between types of stress. Uh, we categorize in my profession stress into two main categories, eustress, which is positive stress, and distress, which is negative stress. Physiologically, my body responds in the same way to what it perceives as stress, and then I interpret whether that's a good or a bad thing. And my 
response to my interpretation helps me moderate what my body is doing mm -hmm. so that I can calm down, mm -hmm. that I can harness it or train it. But we were talking before mm -hmm. we started. Uh, my example for this that I like is Neil Armstrong. When Neil Armstrong was selected as the test pilot that was going to fly and land on the moon, one of the contributing factors to that is he was considered to be completely unflappable. No matter what Any kind emergency of test pilot has condition to be like that. he was faced with, his blood pressure, uh, blood heartbeat count never mm -hmm. went beyond normal ranges. And actually, you mm -hmm. can go back and check the data. I mean, it's available mm -hmm. online. When he landed the lunar module on the moon, his heartbeat never got above 78 beats per minute. And a lot of people who were watching <laughs> were way beyond that because it was scary. But, and so from my genetic standpoint, yeah. I'd say if you're gonna be if you're gonna be somebody who's going to be yes. a test pilot of any type, you have to have the genetic makeup yes. to be able to do that yes. and not get no argument for not me. get freaked out like the rest of the world. And you also have to have the training. If you don't have the genetic makeup, it's not going to work. If you don't have the training, it's not going to work. You have to have both. So this is the perfect pairing Which is why of environment and so genetics. Which is why so much time in, in link trainers practicing all kinds of disaster scenarios. And it's why so they don't choose everyone automated. to be a pilot. Exactly. I mean, seriously, besides having perfect eyes, yeah. you Which have to have... Which is another have, genetic component. Yes, and you have to have great night vision. And you, I mean, there are so many things that you have to have to be a great pilot, especially a fighter pilot, but a pilot of any type. And you have to be able to be chilled out at at any level, just like jumping out of planes. Who does that? That would not be me. Well, that goes, <laughs> I mean, that you have goes, to do that. That goes to personality type, too. I right. mean, the fighter pilot's motto is lead, follow, or get out of the way. Do something. <laughs> That's and do right. something now. You yeah, know? And, which and would be so, O, Because by they're the way. living life on the edge of the sword. That's an O blood type. Yeah. That's an O. Uh, that It'd be truly fire, is a blood type. How many fighter pilots are type O? Yeah. I know. The only one I ever I ever knew was, I mean, the the my uh, surgeon friend that was in the in the um, National Guard and flew F 15s He was an O. Hmm. He's a surgeon, so we always you know that stuff. We've had this conversation. Yes. So um, I forgot to go through the last one. Okay. ABs. Sorry. Yeah. Let's go back. Last last personality type for AB. So this is the high the highly changed adapted blood type. That's to, what I think I am. I'm highly evolved. Highly evolved. And by the way, all of my nurses in my office, nurse practitioners and nurse, are AB. Mm -hmm. And my office administrator's AB. I mean, my mother was so you AB. Surround yourself I'm with surround ABs. myself with ABs. Which we that's all an get along. response on your part. Right. We all get along well. <laughs> and so um, they're intuitive, emotional, passionate, friendly, trusting, and empathetic. Mm -hmm. Empathetic. No other place does this say empathetic. Have you noticed that? So empathetic I I think is I'm what I'm looking AB. at. <laughs> I'm sorry. That was so weird. I didn't mean to laugh at you. <laughs> you just read. You are you just, such an A. You just read me that <laughs> I'm a B. But you just read me the, um, the, Myers Briggs or yeah. Myers Briggs and yeah. does not say empathetic. It but can be my, a learned skill. But one of the other personality types that uh, I took testing, we did testing on our whole office for personality types who works yeah. well together and processing things. And and my very best skill was being adaptive. Yeah. And adaptive, that's kind of that means you adapt to your environment. So. When I was in, so you learn how to do this. Like I was in residency and all, you'd stay up 20, 36 hours. You can't, you don't do that anymore. My daughter didn't have to do that anymore, but I had to do that. So I'm, I'm thinking, how do I adapt right, to this? Right. So at about midnight on the first night, first leg of this, you've already been up all day. You've worked into the evening. And so now it's midnight, kind of halfway. I'd be like, I love this. When's the next emergency coming in? Yeah. Let's go down to the ER and You're see if we can drum dream. up something. Yep. Because I'm adapting to staying up for the rest of sure. a night and day. Right. And you know, I wonder. Let, let's do some. Let's do some uh, kind of pretend something comes in. Let's let's figure this out. What if somebody comes in bleeding right now? What do we do? Let's let's go through this. You know, and and that kind of stuff to keep us going. So that's adaption. I mean, adapting. Now some people go. Yeah. And they go to midnight. And they go. Yeah. And, they, and, and they there's can't nothing they can away. do to stay awake oh, unless yeah. unless then. If you've ever studied for finals with an ink pen under your chin, so that when you fall down. Really? Are they, they I've never make, done that. They make things on cars now that track your eye movement, and when you don't shift your eyes in so many seconds, alarms go off. 
to help you stay awake so you don't fall asleep driving. Mm -hmm. A lot of this stuff is fascinating to Kathy and I. And to, to put it back in perspective, the argument is offered in this book by this doctor that a lot of these circumstances go back to blood typing. And that if you know the markers of your blood type, you can have predictive value for where you might have issues and how you might behave. And it's just like a lot of the other kinds of tests, like the Myers-Briggs. It's a useful piece of data. It's not uh, a conclusive piece of data. It's not an absolute guarantee. There's a whole mix of traits in each one of these categories. What your particular mix is uh, may be relevant to you. And if you want to follow along, if you want to play at home, <laughs> uh, you can go on Amazon.com and download or order for about 6 or $7 a blood test kit. If you don't know your blood test, you blood can test. find out. Uh -huh. And I'm, I'm going to do that before next week so that when we continue this conversation, uh, I'll know my blood we'll type. We'll see who's right. We'll see who's right. <laughs> there speaks do you the, know uh, your, what is that? Do you know yourself or do I know you better? <laughs> well, we'll have to find out. So, so thank you for watching. Thank you. Email your questions or comments to podcast at biobalancehealth.com. You can find the Biobalance HealthCast on iTunes and on YouTube. For more information about bioidentical hormone pellet therapy and other reverse aging solutions, visit biobalancehealth.com or call 314-993-0963. You can find Dr. Maupin on Twitter at Dr. Kathy Maupin and on Facebook at facebook.com slash biobalancehealth. Find Brett Newcomb at brettnewcomb.com.